Next, we are going to load the software, set our testing parameters, and run the test. So we go to software for Corti, Directo, in English is Shear. We go, the first thing, very important, we go to File, we do Load, and we're going to load a template file. This is a template, or we can load a, a test that was run previously, and we can use it as a template file. Now we're going to run this residual test as a template, so this is our test. Now you have a project number, all this information you need to update, uh, but this information is not necessary to run the test. This is for the report. So we're going to put the date, the test number, and next we need to follow the logic here. We have a project, specimen, water content, read table, test parameter, consolidation, and shear. Some of this information does not change. Specimen, circular, initial diameter, initial height, initial sample weight, then specific gravity, and the plasticity. Next, the water content, which we can put afterwards. Read table, this is how the data is recorded. We can select time, or strain, or displacement in the subsequent phases of the test. Next, the test parameters. This is never going to change. You always start with consolidation and do shear. Now, this is our consolidation table. We can put one step or we can put different steps here. Uh, in this case, we're going to rerun this test. We're going to go to a little higher load or stress. This is a maximum duration, minimum duration. That is going to depend on the type of test that you are running. Then we have shear table, and in this case here we are running the test very fast, and we are running it as a residual test. Now this is all the parameters you need to enter to run your test. The next thing you are going to do, you are going to view, check the system, and look at that there is a communication, that everything is working, the vertical load, this is an analog reading, and this is engineering reading. And the analog reading times the calibration coefficient gives you the engineering reading. And the, the vertical motor power is on, the horizontal motor power is on, then the switches are all off. Now the values that you see here, you can check manually that those are correct values. You can press on the load cell, the vertical load cell, you should see about 100 Newton. You can also press on the horizontal load and you can see about 100 Newton. By hand, that's how much a human being can press. And then also you can look at the vertical displacement, the horizontal displacement, and insert a gauge with a non-thickness and you see the change in the displacement equal to that non-thickness. This is good to go. The test is ready to run.